What's up, everyone? This is Brian Pfeiffer, MarketingMeatHead.com. Today, I'm going to talk about why Citibank shut me down and credit cards for your affiliate marketing business. All right, welcome back. So uh, we make money on this channel, make money online, Amazon FBA, Shopify, affiliate marketing, everything that has to do with making money online, a lot of tutorials. Uh, and occasionally I do go over some good advice like credit cards and whatnot because I have a lot of experience in this field uh, coming from a guy who's got over 800 credit score. I uh, have a lot of credit cards and uh, today we're going to talk about why I got shut down by Citibank and uh, what we can do to kind of avoid this in the future. So if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, bang the notifications bell, like this video and share it if you think it can help people. All right, so let's get started here. Here's my uh, American Express uh, platinum card that I have, and uh, this is uh, the amount of miles that I have, or what are your points, whatever you want to call them. I'm sitting at 323,000, and um, this was like at zero at the beginning of the year, so uh, I've spent over 300 grand on this this particular credit card in the first three months of 2019. Uh, you can see here the date here, 27 to 38, uh, business services, that's a lot of traffic and whatnot on Facebook, uh, but so far, just in the one month, I've spent over uh, $80,000. Um, that's one credit card that I own. Okay, so I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to credit cards. Uh, I have a bunch. Um, let's talk a little bit about credit card, which credit cards you want to have as a business owner and uh, why you want to have a business um, in general to have credit cards. Uh, there's a couple. When I first kind of started out affiliate marketing, I actually used my personal credit cards to run traffic. And um, I didn't get shut down or anything. But uh, every time I'd run up a balance and then I, did, I didn't pay it by the date the statement hit, that would hit my credit report. And of course, you know, when you're running heavy affiliate campaigns, sometimes you can be running uh, at any one time $100,000 worth of, uh, you know, back uh, traffic and whatnot. And uh, so I was running up these huge tabs uh, on my uh, personal credit. Like I'd have like $150,000 balances, even though I was paying it off before the interest hit it would still show on my credit report. So that brought my credit score down tremendously. Uh, so that's a big problem. So to kind of avoid that, you wanna go ahead and open up like an LLC. Um, you know, there's different states that have advantages and whatnot. You can look up Delaware, uh, Wyoming's one, uh, Nevada's another. I'm in Nevada, so I have a Nevada LLC. I also have an Illinois LLC. I actually have two Nevada LLCs. Um, and I'll explain why I have that in a, in a minute and you'll see why it makes sense. Now, uh, Every time I open up an LLC, you got to build up a little bit of credit. You got to maybe open up a checking account uh, with the business information. Uh, you got to go ahead and get an EIN, obviously, so you pay your taxes and whatnot. And then over time, you start kind of getting like what's called like business credit. It's kind of like uh, a person that has an, is an entity and they have a credit report. And then you have a business that has like a credit report. Like you get a loan, you pay back the loan. Uh, you get some business credit cards, you pay, you know, pay them off on time. Uh, you start establishing some credit as a business, and then you're able to go ahead and get more credit cards and get higher limits. And over time, I've built up a, a substantial amount of credit for uh, what, my one business, and I'm slowly building up another business right now uh, for a couple reasons. Okay, now um, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the credit cards uh, that I have and why uh, I have those cards and uh, why I'm continuing to get more cards because of uh, issues like what recently happened to me with Citibank. Um, so I think the best card right now is uh, this particular card here. I actually have one here. I'm going to cover up the number, but uh, that's it right there. So uh, that's a Spark uh, Capital One card here. And you can just Google best credit cards, and there's a bunch of stuff that comes up. This is the best one that I've found so far. Um, I have a Spark Business uh, credit card, and it's 2% cash back. So you cannot beat that. Um, you do got to pay an annual fee. I think it's something like 90, yeah, it's 95 bucks. It looks like, and you get an intro, intro bonus and whatnot. But this card has been an absolute, uh, game changer for my business because that 2% cash back, uh, we use PayPal for our credit card processing for, um, a lot of transactions and whatnot, and they take 2.9%. Well, we get 2% every time we charge something with this. So what we do is we take in the money with PayPal and 2.9 is gone, but then we get 2% back on the back door when we use the card to buy the services for the people uh, when they come to Vegas and whatnot. And basically then it only costs me about 0.9% to run those transactions. Okay, so it kind of cancels it out. So it's huge uh, at the end of the day for us. Uh, we run on kind of tight margins out here in terms of like uh, our overall percentage of what we make on the entire job. And uh, that extra 2% we get back in cash makes a huge difference in our overall numbers at the end of the year. So uh, I think the best card out there right now is the Spark uh, 
business credit card for 2% cash back. $95 yearly fee. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Now, I've been building up the limit on this one. I think they started me out at 20 k I'm up to 30 now, and I'm hoping to get it up to like 50 or 100 k uh, and then I'm going to use this for like everything. Um, sometimes the affiliate campaigns that we are running, I, I need like even higher limits uh, just because it takes time to get paid and whatnot. Um, so I do have my other card. My other big card is my American Express Platinum card. Now, this card has no limit. I mean, there is kind of probably a limit on it at some point. There's spending power, and you can check that. But I'm over a hundred thousand dollars in spending power. I've spent over a hundred grand a month, uh, m multiple times, and paid it off right away. And so they, I got really good credit with Amex right now on their Platinum Crowd card. And so that's kind of a card we use for like higher um, volume campaigns and whatnot. Um, you do get points when you spend money on uh, Amex, as you can see uh, here. Um, you know, three hundred twenty-three thousand points I have to use. That's you know, probably worth about 2500 bucks in travel or whatever. Um, but that's uh, that's the American Express Platinum card, this one here. Uh, it is kind of a pricey one. It is $595 for a year. I do pay that, but uh, it's kind of nice if you do some traveling and the airport happens to have like a um, like uh, American Express lounge. Uh, and a lot of the airports, the bigger ones, have this lounge. And you can actually go into those lounges and you can get drinks and food and whatnot and kind of use the internet. Uh, they're kind of nice, so it's kind of nice to be able to go in and do that with the Platinum Card. Uh, they do have a whole system for that, so that's kind of like probably the big perk is the airport lounges and then the, the points, obviously you get points and whatnot. And, uh, you know, the points, it, they're okay. I mean, it's not as good as 2% cash back, but you can book some flights and whatnot. It's not like one point equals one dollar. It doesn't really work like that. It's more like, um, you know, you can use the points to pay off the card, but like, for example, if you had like a thousand, a uh, hundred thousand points and uh, you wanted to pay off the card instead of being worth like a thousand dollars, it would be worth like 700 or 650 or something like that. So it's like not one to one, but it's like, okay. So, um, but I have been accumulating a lot of points with American Express. I'll probably use that for some flights and whatnot later in the year to some masterminds or vacations or whatever. Uh, so that's number two on my list of good credit cards is the uh, American Express business card, uh, Platinum Edition, okay? Uh, I also have a, a Chase card now. Chase has... Um, Chase is, this is my Southwest Chase card. Chase has a lot of uh, different options here. They have an ink, they have a sapphire. Uh, they, they all have like their different like perks and whatnot. Uh, I know a, a couple of my customers, they like the um, this, this Chase uh, sapphire card for whatever reason. Uh, I think you get more bonuses, there's different perks. You just gotta go through and figure out which one's the best for you. I happen to fly Southwest a lot because I go to Chicago, I go to Florida. Um, I go to Arizona, I go to LA, I go to San Diego, and those are all like Vegas um, popular destinations for Southwest, so they have like a ton of flights. So for me, personally, where I live and where I'm based, the Southwest visa makes sense for me, okay? So you got to kind of look at what makes sense for you. Since Southwest has a kind of like a huge hub here in Vegas, and they fly just about everywhere that I go, I use Southwest all the time, and they're they're program is pretty solid. I got like a free companion pass now because I use the heck out of this card as well. Uh, I can take, uh, I can de designate a companion for the year and say if I was dating a girl, she could go with me wherever I went for completely free. So I got that with uh, Southwest. And then I have like the, um, you know, a lot of miles and whatnot and I just use those for flights. And it's just, for me, it's really, really convenient. So I, I like the Southwest Visa from Chase. Um, I did have a problem with Chase uh, back in the day. Um, I've always been in the night nightclub and nightlife industry, and for whatever reason, some of these bigger like corporate type of banks, uh, they don't like this business. They don't like the business model. They don't like the alcohol and nightclub type of stuff uh, for whatever reason. And uh, Chase basically closed all my accounts at one time, including all my credit cards. Now, um, fast forward about five or six years, I went and applied just uh, out of the blue to see if they'd accept me under my business, and I got this card, and now I've got it up to about a 38k limit uh, on the uh, Chase Southwest card. I don't think they'll bank with me on like a checking or personal level, but for whatever reason, my you know my personal uh, credit backs up my business credit, and they they allowed me to have a business card, so I was able to get the Southwest card back. Uh, I always liked this card because I liked that companion pass. Uh, when I was dating a girl, pretty seriously, I had her on the companion pass, and it was like awesome. We'd I'd get the free flight with me, and then she got to fly everywhere I went for free. So it was like. It was money. It was totally money. And I got that companion pass sitting here. So uh, hopefully one of these days I'll get a girlfriend and she can be flying around with me whenever I travel. So uh, that's uh, the, the Chase card. So take a look at the Chase options. You got the, chat, uh, the Sapphire, the Southwest Visa, and you got the Ink card.
Uh, so those that's the the number three card in my ar- three card in my arsenal. Uh, the number four card in my arsenal was the uh, Citibank uh, American Advantage card, uh, another airline that I fly a lot of. Uh, they fly to Miami direct, uh, Chicago direct to O'Hare. Um, I did like uh, the Citibank card for one other big reason, and the big reason was uh, when you're affiliate marketing, every one of the other three cards, the Chase, the Capital One, and the American Express, all take like two or three days for your payment to post when you make the payment. The nice thing about the Citibank uh, uh, American Advantage card was that as soon as you made that payment, it showed as available balance in your in your uh, limit. So that was huge when we were running heavy campaigns because like I could make a payment and like immediately I had available credit. Whereas like on Amex, Capital One, and Chase, you make the payment, it's like two days and sometimes even three days if you pay on a weekend before that um, available balance hits your account uh, on the payment, which is kind of annoying because if you're running traffic, sometimes you don't want to wait three days to be able to have that available balance. So this was a money card for that. This is probably the best thing about the Citibank card. I actually had a personal card uh, with a 30K limit. This business card was a 20K limit and I had two of those. Now they shut me down, okay? Let me tell you why they shut me down and uh, hopefully you can take away a lesson from what happened to me. Uh, I kind of already hinted at it, when it, what happened to me with Chase and the, uh, the nightclub business. Uh, same sort of thing happened to me out here in Vegas. I actually had a Citibank uh, personal checking account. Uh, I had a business ba- banking account in Chicago with a bank called Fifth Third, it's a regional bank. And what happened was for like three, four years out here, I've had a personal account. Actually, it's been about five or six years now. I've had a personal account here with Citibank and uh, up, up recently in the last like one or two years, we started doing a lot of business. We started really getting bigger and bigger. And I collect a lot of cash on the weekends from my customers. And then what I do is I put it in, I was putting it into my personal account and I'd wire it to my business account and uh, go ahead and pay the credit cards and whatnot off with, with, that, uh, with that wire. Now, uh, I kind of knew this was like, gonna throw up some red flags at some point because like putting in like anywhere from five to 10K in cash a week into a personal checking account does not look good, okay? Remember, the people that are making decisions at these big banks like Citibank, they're looking at numbers. That's it. They're just looking at numbers. They don't know me. They don't know my business. They don't know anything. They see a personal card on a Brian Pfeiffer. They look at my credit. It's good. But then they see all this cash coming in. Okay, what do they think immediately? Okay, whether I'm a you know a legit business owner like I am or not, they think I'm like a drug dealer or some kind of gambler or something, and I'm putting in all this cash into a personal account. So it's a big no-no. Uh, so take a lesson from that. Uh, if you are collecting cash on any kind of level from a business, uh, to put it into a personal account, uh, you can do it a few times, it's not the end of the world, but if you do it like consistently, like week after week, like I was doing, you're asking for it, okay? So Citibank over time, uh, you know, looked at my habits and I'm putting on all this cash. Uh, I pay my taxes, I do everything legit, but like, you know, if I would have had a business account with Citibank, which I actually tried to do, I went and got another LLC and tried to open up a business account with a separate LLC at Citibank and they opened it up uh, for about two weeks and for whatever reason, they just closed it. They didn't even give it give me a chance to put any money in or do anything with it. So, I, you know, I don't make the decisions at the bank. They don't give you a reason. They just closed it. And then not even like two months later, they closed my personal checking account on me. And then out of the blue, they closed all my Citibank credit cards. <laughs> So Citibank shut me down. They completely wiped me out. I have no more Citibank uh, American Advantage cards, business or personal, no more checking account. And of course, that business account that lasted two weeks is gone. So what did I do? I took my LLC and my EIN. I went over to a regional bank because I'm in Nevada. And now I'm over at Nevada State Bank. And I have... uh, a business account over there, and I have a personal checking and savings over there. So, so far, so good. Uh, but I am putting in a lot of cash, just like I was at Citibank, but I'm doing it into my business account, so I should be okay. Uh, and then on the other flip side of that, I was able to go in and get a Nevada State Bank credit card. They have like this rewards cash program. It's not half bad. It's like 1% cash back. It's not quite as good as a Spark. But I did get a business credit card now with the other LLC. So now I'm starting to build up a little bit of credit with the other LLC. So what I can do, hopefully, is go ahead and get probably another... Um, I'll try to go ahead and get another uh, Chase card and potentially another uh, Spark 2% cash back with that other LLC and get a higher limit uh, and eventually have two of those Spark cards going and uh, maybe two of the Chase uh, you know, Southwest cards going on two different LLCs. Now, I don't know if I'll go out and get another American Express card, although I like the high limits that I have with that unless I need it. I don't like paying like $500 plus a month. What was it, like $495 or $595? Or a year. It was it was five ninety five an annual fee. It's not necessary to have two of those per year. I mean, 
Uh, I, I don't think it, to pay it, you know twelve hundred dollars a year for two American Express cards, unless I'm running ridiculous amounts of traffic and I really need it. That would be the only way I could really justify that. But uh, one is enough. It does what I need. I get the perks uh, and the miles and, and, and the high limit with one card. But I would like to get a Capital One Spark two percent cash back and another Chase card with a high limit. Uh, maybe I'll try that Sapphire the Ink card, uh, depending on which one works better for me on the other business and so over time what you start to do is when you become like a big affiliate like myself and you start having media buyers like i have uh three media buyers so i got myself buying traffic i got another business running off off my credit cards and then i got three media buyers running off my credit cards so at any one time i could be out like 150 200 thousand dollars in like traffic going out like it's like almost like a full-time job just to keep track of all the money going in and out so you know, you need a lot of credit cards. So that's why I have a separate LLC now. So, and you always want to keep, um, potentially as, as you grow in a business, keep another LLC around and build up some credit on that just in case something happens. Like I just got sued recently. I did a video on that uh, for, for New Year's. It's not going to be a big deal. I'm going to end up getting out of it at some point. It's going to cost a little bit of money. But, um, you know, if I were to get sued, you know, for something really bad and I had to bankrupt an LLC, it'd be nice to have a secondary LLC on hand that I can still run and operate from, have business banking accounts and whatnot, uh, just in case. You always want to kind of have a backup plan when you get to, you know, the multi-seven-figure businesses like I'm in right now uh, to keep, the, you know, the actual business up and running just in case something were to go down, Okay. Like, say, for example, uh, my regional bank up in Chicago, they canceled my business account. Well, now at least I have another business account handy that I can keep operating from, okay? So uh, in business, you definitely want to always have, like, a backup plan, extra credit cards. Uh, you know, over time, build up your credit on business. Uh, try to, you know, try to keep your stuff off your personal um, credit so your credit score continues to go up. Now, the only uh, one thing I did want to mention here before I close out that I found very interesting is uh, I do have, I did have the Citibank uh, business card. I did have the um, Chase Southwest card and I do have the American Express uh, card and I did have the Spark. Now, uh, and these were all business cards under Surreal LLC, which is my LLC. And every one of those did not show up on my personal credit except the Spark 2%. So for whatever reason, uh, Amamex, Chase, and Citibank did not report to my crediting agency when I when I would like have a statement balance, but Capital One does. So uh, for whatever that's worth, uh, even though it's a business credit card, it does show up on my personal credit uh, with the Spark. But I kind of like deal with it because I like that 2% cash back. So I try to pay it off or as much as I can before the statement hits. So it doesn't really hit my personal credit. But it's actually good once in a while to show a little bit of a balance on your personal credit. Uh, so it actually looks like you're using some of your like credit limit and then you pay it off right away. It's, it's actually good for my credit score. It's been creeping up. I'm over like 811 at some point right now. So it's pretty crazy. But uh, yeah, that's the only thing that I don't like about the Capital One card is it actually shows on your credit when that statement hits. Uh, for whatever reason, the other ones don't. But uh, hopefully you guys learned something today. Uh, I know a lot about credit cards. If you have any questions for me, leave them below and I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, I am the Marketing Meathead. We'll talk to you later. Thank you.